Monster Hunter World has finally been released on PC after being released on console quite some time ago. But right here beside me is we've got all these used PC parts that we've hustled. And the minimum requirements now on PC state that you need an FX 6300 or an i5 4460 and a GTX 760 or R7 260X or greater. So today we've actually got an i7 860 which isn't exactly the same specification as an i5-4460, but of course, we're gonna be overclocking it. And we've also got here a GTX 780. So it's better than a 760, and we're gonna see what FPS we can get. But of course, what about the prices? We've picked up this whole PC here in a hustle deal in Japan for around about 55 US dollars. It costs us 6,000 yen. And we also got an SSD that we're gonna throw in it to make things snappier. Got this on sale for 30 Australian dollars, which would be like 22, US dollars and then the case we actually discarded the case in Japan because we had to travel and we got this here for around about eight US dollars this is kind of like a monster hunter looking case so we thought we'd fit the theme with something that looks a little bit crazy and back to the graphics card which is the final piece of the puzzle we picked this up for around a hundred US dollars which is like 10,000, 11,000 Japanese yen. So here's the total cost of the build. We are just coming under 200 US dollars and the game itself costs around 60 US dollars on Steam, but you can pick it up cheaper on CD key sites that do wholesale the keys, which is exactly what we did. But with that aside, let's put this thing together, strap on in and <laughs> have some fun. Since we're dealing with used parts, I have to clean these down. My method of choice is usually a bit of brake cleaner if it's really dirty, the data vac, and also a bit of WD-40 for that new look shine. However, although the motherboard, the CPU, and the case are dirty, this graphics card here is actually very clean. and might even dare say that it's actually new and hasn't been used before because the fins on the blower here are in immaculate condition. Usually on a used graphics card, the fans, whether it be one as small as this, or the big fans on your custom graphics cards will usually have dust on them and traces of dust even if they've been cleaned out so either someone has really cleaned this which means we don't have to clean it or it's brand new which i'm going with the latter with that aside let's start cleaning these parts down and put this build together So now we've just booted it up and sometimes there are problems. This time around, I think the motherboard is uh, problematic. Honestly, I've never seen a problem like this before. It'll boot up and it'll get into the Windows uh, splash screen in order to boot the computer. But after that, it'll, um, it'll just crash. And so we've tried different memory. We've also tried a different CPU as well and it's still crashing. And now the one thing I've noticed about it is someone previously has updated the BIOS. So my guess is they had problems with this computer. They tried updating the BIOS. It still presented the problems, hence why and just say it rebooted. So, and, and just, so yeah, they've tried essentially to um, fix it themselves and they couldn't. So they've just essentially gave up on this PC, but not to worry. We have a contact on the Gold Coast, the King of the Coast. He has a replacement motherboard for us. Instead of, usually we'd go onto AliExpress and order another replacement board off there, but because we want to get this build up and running for Monster Hunter ASAP, we will go to the King of the Coast and get it right now so we can finish the build. So there's that. I've never seen that before. Phase zero exception. So this motherboard, I believe, is toast. Let's go replace it. Of course, one does not just go empty handed to the King of the Coast. We need to bring him some offerings. So 
So it's now the next day and we did a lot of testing. The motherboard that we got from King of the Coast, that was um, not working as well properly. So we changed out the power supply to a Thermaltake Light Power 550, which is a brand new one that we just bought from the local retailers. And that's now working. Even the original ASRock board's working. So I've never seen a power supply cause these kinds of issues where you'd get such a specific problem that recurs. It's really weird. Like it would happen, you'd, you know, you'd go boot up Windows and restart. So it's as if this uh, 12 volt line's okay in this power supply, but maybe the three volt line has been damaged before. And as I said, when we were diagnosing the problems, I think this right here was uh, faulty before the person sold it because they've updated the BIOS, which is a very weird thing to do when everything is running right on your machine. So, uh, kind of makes sense, but now we can finally finish the build off and then see how it performs in Monster Hunter. And now it's judgment time with the Monster Hunter PC. And as we saw before, we had to try out a new power supply, which is going to raise the cost and bring it over that magic $200 number, unfortunately. But on that note, once we got that power supply in, we were able to overclock this to 3.6 gigahertz. We could go a bit higher, but the cooler is the stock cooler. So we're not gonna spend extra money on a cooler when we don't really need to. Since we're using a GTX 780, this combination is really good. We overclocked the DDR3 memory just a little bit just to get that sweet spot. And in Monster Hunter, we saw those frame rates were extremely good with uh, low settings being the sweet spot on this game. So it is a very graphically demanding game. High looks beautiful, but you will need a better graphics card than a 780 to play this game. So for smooth 60 FPS frame rates, overclocking this machine on low settings was where it was at. And of course, for the budget, you definitely can't complain. Trying out another game like PUBG showed that with the latest optimizations, this game ran really well on this PC. Uh, 1080p Ultra was even possible getting over 50 average FPS and the minimums and the 0.1% and 1% lows weren't that bad either. Personally for me, however, I do like higher than 60 FPS. So medium was definitely where it was at for me personally, scoring around 74 average FPS with the 0.1 and 1% lows being very good as well. So here it is, Monster Hunter. And yes, that is a Windows update getting ready. It's just been sitting there for a while now and uh, that's what happens sometimes. But besides that, this PC is phenomenal value for money. It's got this different look. We picked up this case from a, a person selling seven of them very cheap, and I just think it fits the whole Monster Hunter theme very well. We've got different sort of Pokemon colors going on here on the side, and the Gravis card, the 780, does still perform very well in 2018. And that older i7, even though it's not the recommended specs, once we overclock it a bit, it can play Monster Hunter World absolutely fine on PC. So never let those uh, recommended, minimum recommended specs sway you away from building a very good value for money PC like we've got on the desk here. So if you wanna get some uh, links to search for some of these PC parts, then I will put them in the description below. But keep in mind when it comes to deals hunting, it's always best to try and find out local deals in your town or city as that's where you're going to get the best deals possible. Hope you guys enjoyed this Monster Hunter World PC. If you did, then be sure to slap that like button and I look forward to reading your comments in the comments section below if you have any. And I'll catch you in the next tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.